everybody welcome back to my channel and another beans bag and honey crafts company's tutorial today we are making the shambhala corolla bag this is it here isn't it beautiful it is obviously a slouchy bag it actually is quite a bit bigger than it looks you can spread it out this way but when you carry it it is slouchy it is just so pretty it's definitely a different shape than um i've seen shambhala release before but I love it. I love it. So as you get it fuller, of course, it will be less slouchy or it can be slouchy. Um, I, I just have no words to how beautiful this bag is. So it has this curved zipper here. Um, on the inside, it's just got, it's, it's, it's a huge bag. It's like seriously very big. Um, a zipper pocket. Yeah. So excited to show you guys how we are going to make this today. This is the one we are making. I just finished it. Um, so I hope you enjoy this tutorial. We'll see you at the end. Bye guys. Okay, so let's get into the nitty gritty of things of what you're going to need hardware wise and what you're going to need to cut out for this pattern. So it's very minimal hardware. You will need a number five zipper. I use zipper by the yard. Um, to go along with that, you will need one zipper pull and a zipper end. Again, I get all my hardware mainly from uh, M-Line bags. Uh, this zipper pull is from M-Line bags as well. You need two strap ends. This is optional. I always put strap ends on. I, I like the way they look. And of course, your, your bag tag. That's all you're going to need. I am actually going to be adding in two rectangular rings as well because I don't, the pattern calls for metal side connectors for the strap. I do not have that, so I'm gonna do my hidden connector method, which I have down in my Bag Makers 101 playlist. I will leave a link down in the description below so you can see how I do that when we get to that step. But otherwise, and of course, you're going to need about 12 or so rivets for the front of the bag. That's it for hardware. I mean, how awesome is that? And this bag, I mean, it's, it's so gorgeous. And even with the minimal hardware, it looks amazing. Okay, so, pieces you are going to need. I cut myself a, uh, a zipper facing for the inside pocket. Again, this is just my way that I like to do my inside pocket, so I am going to do it on this bag as well. Um, feel free to follow the pattern for, well, she's got a link to how she does her zipper pockets, or you can look in my Bag Makers 101 playlist and see how I do my pocket for easy turning. Again, I will link that down below. Um, you are going to need a piece for your strap. You are going to need two gusset pieces and two lining gusset pieces. You are going to need mirrored to one another, one of each of the side piece part for the front of the bag. You are going to need uh, mirrored to one another, two pieces of the um, exterior front of the bag. This is another part of it. We're gonna be piecing the front of the bag. You're going to need two mirror to each other of the back panel. Oops. Two pieces of your piping fabric and piping cording. Um, again, you can use, you don't need to do the piping, it's optional. Uh, you can use uh, pre-bought piping as well. I like to make my own. And again, I'll leave a link down below on how I make my piping so you can refer to that video as well. For the lining, you're going to need two main lining pieces and a zipper pocket piece. I have backed all of my cotton with SF101 woven interfacing. Uh, this bag, so it gets a slouch, I am just like the last, uh, the last bag that Shambhala did does not have um, interfacing on the front panels of the bag. Um, yeah, so we're gonna go with it. Apparently that's what gives it its shape and will give it its slouch. So again, minimal minimal interfacing even with this pattern. The only piece that will have will be interfaced with foam and I, I use um, Pellon uh, Flex Foam is the the gusset and that's what's going to give the bag its structure and make it so it can stand up but the front and the back panels have no interfacing just the vinyl itself so yeah that's 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 fine by me <laughs> one less thing i have to attach 
So yeah, get everything you need cut out and uh, then we will move on and do the next part. I'm actually going to jump ahead and I am going to do my straps. Again, straps are done the same anyway. So just look down on my playlist again. Down in the description I have a link to how to make the bag straps. And I'm also gonna go ahead and make my piping so we can dive right into this bag. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is start working on our front panel. So you'll wanna grab your two mirrored main front pieces and your two mirrored side pieces like this. So what we wanna do first is we wanna attach the sides onto the main. So I'm just gonna start with this one here. Of course, I don't have that cut very good. That's okay. So this is gonna seem odd because it looks like it doesn't fit because the curve's going the wrong way. This is where the shape of the bag's coming. So you're going to be kind of, as you're pinning it on, you are going to be, see how there's the straight edge here and there's a straight edge here? You want to match those edges up like this as a start. And then on this bottom, see how there's another straight edge there? You're going to put that down like that. So we kind of have guidelines of where we're going to go because it does not look like it's going to fit, but trust me, it will. So work your way down, matching up those raw edges. Use lots of clips to hold it in place because it is going to want to pull away, but this is going to give that really nice curve to the bag. Kind of push those raw edges together. Making sure you're evenly distributing that fabric. This is Mora faux leather, so it is a little bit stretchy. So it makes it a little bit easier to manipulate it. So if you have something that looks like that, it looks like it's all wavy, that is okay. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go along this edge. You're gonna make sure that there's no creases along where we are stitching here. You're gonna stitch with a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way down this side. And then you're gonna open up the seam like this and make sure that the seam is pointing up. See how if the seam is there, it'd be pointing up towards the side piece. And then you're gonna top stitch along the side piece with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance, which is going to keep everything in place. You're going to do the exact same thing, but opposite with the other panel. Can you even see that? Let me, there we go, with the other panel like this. So go ahead, match up those ends, stitch it, top stitch it, come back, and then we will, I'll show you what we do for the next part of assembling this panel. So there it is. I pushed my seam allowances towards the exterior of the bag and it's all top stitched nicely for both sides. So you're gonna be so impressed with how fast this bag comes together. It's a large bag, but it comes, it, it looks, way more complicated than it is. The hardest part is gonna be the top zipper, but the actual body of the bag comes together so incredibly fast. So what you wanna do next is you wanna take your two main exterior panels, the ones that we just finished, put them right sides together like this, match up the raw edges, And at the same time, you're going to take your two exterior back panel pieces and do the same thing.
Now we're going to sew down this seam here with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. But once it's all done, you're going to open it up. You're going to open up your seams. And on either side of this, I'm going to use double sided tape to hold mine in. You want to open up your seams and then top stitch an eighth of an inch down each side of the seam. So you're going to have two top stitches down the middle panels on both. So go ahead and do that. And then uh, we will start putting on the piping. So there's our front panel completely constructed. And there's our back panel. So what we want to do next is if you're going to put piping on, we are going to do that now. Uh, the pattern recommends starting and stopping the piping two inches from the top. So I'm just going to take my chalk. You can use the pattern piece to mark it as well, but sometimes I just find it faster just to use my board, my cutting mat, two inches and two inches, two inches. two inches. I'll just clean up my piping here. Okay, so what you want to do, let's see if I can bring you in closer. All right, so you want to match your piping up with that line and clip it on. Raw edges together all the way around each the front and the back panel. I'm doing the back panel right now. I think it's going to go around my curve without needing to do any snips, probably because it's a quite a wide curve. So I think we'll be okay. If you're having issues with the not fitting, just do a few snips within the seam allowance here on just the piping, and it'll help you turn that corner. But it seems like it'll be just fine. Monday morning and my fingers do not want to work apparently today. You don't have to use as many clips as I do. I am quite anal about clipping because I like everything to stay in place. I don't like to struggle with it later. And I find if I don't clip that I will do that. But if you think you can hold it in place and use a stiletto to do it, you can skip the clipping process altogether. This is just how I find that I need to do it in order to have my bag turn out as good as I want it to. And I can see now I cut my piping too short, darn it. So I'm actually just going to readjust, let's see I'm two inches too short. So I'm actually going to bring this line down one inch so my piping will fit. So my piping will start at the three inch mark rather than the two inch mark because I don't want to cut more piping and redo it. That'd be a waste of materials. So, and the piping is strictly decorative. All right, so if you cut it properly, you're good to go. Me, I'm gonna have to readjust it so it's at the three inch mark on both panels. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna go along here and I just follow the stitching of the piping that I had made all the way around using my zipper foot on my front and my back panels and then come back and we'll start doing the riveting. Oops, I almost forgot to mention. Okay, so yes, I, I actually remember um, I didn't have enough width 
of my vinyl to make the uh, piping as long as the pattern called for. I just forgot to take note of that. Uh, so that's why I'm going an inch down. But one thing before you sew on the piping, you wanna make sure you're easing the end of the piping into the seam allowance. So now that we have it all clipped on in, we have our line there. You're gonna just go like this and you're going to move it so that end is on end with the um, raw edge of the panel. So like this, move it out like this and then clip that. So when you sew, you're gonna start here. You're gonna follow the line of the panel. It's gonna be a quarter of an inch here. You're gonna go over top of the piping and then meet up with the, the lining of the piping and go all the way down and around. And when you get to this side, it's the same thing. You want to move this out of the seam allowance like that. So on this side, you'll see that it's popped out like that. Okay, so go ahead and do that. All right, so the piping is all on. Uh, the next step you wanna do is on the main front panel. If you're gonna do the rivets, this is where you're gonna do them now. I already took my pattern piece and marked where all my rivet holes were. So if you're doing rivets, uh, use the pattern piece to decide where they're gonna go or um, you can eyeball it yourself. I just wanted to show you this really cool tool. I do not know what it's called. Um, it's a leather bunch of some sort that I got off of Amazon. Um, it's just really, makes it really easy to make these holes without having to use, usually I use this. I also have a, a hole punch die for my um, rivet press, but I'm actually pretty lazy and hate having to change out those dies. So this works really good. I use this on all of my cork wallets and everything as well. I want to show you how it works. So there's my first hole. I'm just gonna put it there and just punch down and there's my hole. So you wanna go through and punch down all your holes. Oops. I mean, how fast is this? I'll try to find my link. I got it off of Amazon. I'll see if I can find it and put it in the description below. Um. So I have all my holes for my rivets. Now when you go to install your rivets, um, again, I have a rivet press, which I will be using. Um, I only have medium sized rivets. I think the small size would have been better because this material is uh, so thin. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my rivet and I also am going to back it. I always save my little scraps of Decaville Light or Peltex just for my rivet. So I'm going to stick this in, put this on the back here like this to stabilize it. Put on my cap like that. And then rivet it down. Just like that. So go ahead and do that all the way around your decorative riveting. riveting. It's going to be riveting, I swear. And I'm also going to install my nameplate on here at the same time. So go and do that if you're doing that, and then um, come back and we'll start working on that gusset. So there it is. How pretty is that? As you can see, I backed them all. That's because, um, well, I usually back my rivets, but I only had the medium rivets, and I probably, because the vinyl is so thin, used would have used uh, small rivets if I had them, because then the posts would be shorter, but adding that deck of a light on the back helps that but yeah that is gorgeous we have the front panel we have the back panel done the next steps are our gussets so at this point you are going to want to baste your foam onto your two gusset pieces um, in the pattern especially if you're on a domestic machine um, it says to keep the interfacing outside of your seam allowance um, I'm on an industrial, so I don't worry about that. And also because I'm using sew-in sew foam, there's really no way of 
adhering it unless you glue it and I really don't like to glue it um, onto this if I keep it out of the seam allowance. You could use fusible foam but at the same time I would worry about um, about it about it wrinkling when you turn it. Another option you can do for domestic machine is within the seam allowance. I find if you if you have a machine that does a zigzag stitch um, you can baste it with that and it compresses the foam so um, it makes it a lot easier to sew if you're on a domestic machine. Um, when I used to use my Juki 2010Q for making bags, I never ever had any problems sewing through the foam. So it all depends on your machine, what it can handle and what it can't. So you're going to do that. You're also going to go and if you're doing the metal connectors, you're going to install them where it's marked on the pattern on each of the tops of these, I'm going to install my hidden connectors here. Again, I will put a link uh, down below to show how I do that. Um, and then when you're done that, I said we're just kind of skipping through some of these steps because they are the same with almost every uh, Shambhala bag that we do, is we want to join our gussets. So you're going to put them wrong sides together like this. You're going to sew across the seam with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. You're going to open up those seams and then you're going to a top stitch down each side of that seam. You can also take your um, lining gusset piece and do that and sew as well exactly the same just so we're that step ahead. So go ahead and do all that. We'll come back and then we will be putting the gusset onto our main panels to finish up the exterior of the bag. Okay so we have our gusset. I know it looks funny. I have D-rings. I didn't have rectangular rings, so we're making do with what I got. I don't usually carry a lot of gold hardware, but I felt like this bag really needed the gold hardware with the olive. So, okay. So now we want to attach this, our gussets and our main panels together. So we're lucky because our centers are already marked because of our center crease here and our center seam here. So right sides together, take your gusset piece and your main exterior and line up those centers. I like to usually put three on the bottom when I'm doing that. And then go up the sides and match the top. And the other side as well. This is a huge bag, wow. Okay, and then you're gonna work your way around, evenly distributing that fabric all the way down. Now remember, your piping is going to stick out because we have it veered out and that's what we want because we want it to veer out into the seam. There we go, it's a little misaligned. Again, I like to use lots of clips to make sure everything stays in place, especially because we're working with that piping. I still have my zipper foot on my machine because that's the easiest thing to do unless you have a piping foot, but I do not have one of those. So, okay, you can see how it doesn't look like this is going to fit. So just in my gusset around that curve, I'm just going to put a few small, like eighth of an inch snips just to help work it around that curve. because we're taking a straight piece and we're trying to make it rounded. So this just helps spread that fabric out. And I hope you can see this. I know it's hard when I'm sitting at my machine, but I just wanna show how I do this one panel on the machine. Let's 
one side done. Then I'm going to have to do a couple snips just to help it around that corner. Just make sure the snips are smaller than your quarter of an inch seam allowance. Make sure there's no lumps or bumps in there. You want it to be smooth so you don't have any nips or tucks. Okay, let's move these out of the way so I don't knock them on the floor. So usually I would say to sew this with the main panel on the bed, but we're not going to do that today because I want to be able to follow the stitching line on the main panels of where our uh, piping was attached. I'm going to use that as a guide so I know I'm not going over top of my piping um, and getting it tucked into the seam. We don't want to do that. So. I'm actually going to do it with the gusset side down, but I'm going to have my hand under here making sure the gusset's staying in place and um, not bunching up or giving any nits or tucks. So you're going to start at the top, quarter inch seam allowance, again I have my zipper foot on, back stitch, and then when you get to the line, the stitching line of where your um, piping was attached, follow that stitch line and you should be golden to not get your piping stuck within your seam allowance, except for the where we are veering it off of course. We want it to veer off there. So I just have my hand under here and I'm just kind of, I don't know if you can see, I kind of go in like this and making sure it's all staying nice and even underneath. It's nice to be able to have a seam to follow because then you're not sewing blind. If you need to adjust, remember to keep your needle down. And just go clip to clip. That's the seam of our, uh, I just felt something weird, but it's the seam of where we uh, did our piecing. two-thirds of the way there.
Okay, and now I'm going over top of my piping where it's veered off and following the line of the bag for the rest of the quarter inch seam allowance. And back stitch and breathe. Okay, so then you can now pop it out just to make sure you got it everywhere good. And didn't catch that piping in any in anything. And I think it looks pretty good. Let's see, like that. And this is where we veered off. You can see how the piping kind of goes up and into the seam. So that's make sure you got everything in and there's no holes. I just like to run my finger along it and that looks pretty good so pop it back inside out take your other piece and rinse and repeat do the exact same thing so go ahead and do that and then our exterior part is done besides the zipper and we'll step into the lining all right guys look at that our exterior is done how gorgeous is this bag so far all right, so you can just set that aside for now. I obviously didn't push out all my seams here. Um, and we are going to work on the lining. The lining is going to go really fast. It's very similar to um, how we did the front. So you should have your gusset piece that you've already sewn together, like we, we did when we did the other gusset piece. And you have your two main panels. I already installed the zipper on this one. For my easy turning method, if you want to see how I did that, I, it's linked below in Bag Makers 101 playlist. You can check it out there on how I install my zippers. So let's show you how we're going to put this together. Bring it down here. All right. So we're putting it together exactly the same way we did with the front. You're matching your centers. matching the sides matching the other side and you're going to clip it all the way around I don't think I need to do that on camera you're going to do that all the way around now what we're going to do different is you are going to start sewing the seam with a quarter of an inch seam allowance then you when you get about halfway down the arm here you're going to branch out into a half inch seam allowance all the way around the bottom then when you get to about a third of the way back up you're going to start branching back into a quarter of an inch seam allowance and the reason we do that is it'll still fit around the bag at the top but it's going to make the lining slightly smaller so we can, um, it doesn't sag and, ba and be as baggy as, um, so we don't want that. We want it to be nice and a tight fit. Now the, so for this panel, the panel at the side that has your zipper pocket, you're going to do that. You're going to sew it all the way around. But when it comes to putting on this other one, and for this one, I would sew it with the main panel on the bed of the machine because we're not worrying about any piping. When you come to do the other side, which is opposite the zipper pocket that we have open, you're going to match all the centers, but you're going to leave from about here to here. So that's about, whoops, about six inches or so open at the bottom. And that is so when it comes time, we can turn the bag through there and then we'll be sewing up the seam through the zipper pocket later. So again, sew a quarter of an inch, half inch closer to the bottom, quarter inch back up to the top. The other panel leave do the same thing but leave an opening on the bottom so go ahead and do that and then we'll come back and we'll be on to the hardest part of the whole bag which will be the zipper all right we're very very close to the home stretch here is my lining all done i have my hole in the bottom i have my hole in the pocket you can set that aside for now now we want to prep our zipper um, this zipper is done Similar to many of the other Shambhala bags, like the Pandora bag is done like this. Um, I can't even think of what other bags are done like this, but the Pandora bag for sure. 
Um, it seems tricky, but once you get the hang of it, it isn't, it isn't hard to do at all. So the first thing we want to do is we want to take our zipper tape, first tack the ends so you don't accidentally lose your uh, pull, and then we want to make these ends go to 90 degree angle. And how I did that was, just pulled it off, if you take your zipper, you fold it in upon itself like this, and then you just tack it down right there, and then do the same on the other side, like that, and then tack it down like that, then you get that. So that's what we want to do. Okay, deep breath. If you haven't taken a break yet and you're making this bag along with me, this would be a good time for a break because this is, this is the hardest part of the whole bag. So what we want to do now, if I can find my chalk, is on both sides of the bag, uh, we want to mark in Uh, let me see here. From the seam here, we want to mark in one inch, and this is going to determine where we are going to start and stop our stip zipper. So just from this exterior panel part here, so I'd flatten this out like this, put this against your, that seam there, which is where it attached to the, the gusset, and just make a chalk mark there. Do the same on the other side. Flip it over and do the same on the exterior. Just like that. Okay. I might have to put this up a little higher. Excuse my mess back here. So now what we want to do with our front facing us, we want to take our zipper pull, okay, and it's going to be to the left. We're going to put it right sides together. I'm actually going to undo my zipper. We're going to put it right sides together with our main panel, and we're going to line that V up with that mark we just made, and clip it together. Oopsies. I'll bring you a little higher. Okay, and then you're just going to take this down and around. Don't stretch your zipper because you don't want it to be wavy. And you're just going to clip it along that whole curve all the way around. little bit awkward because the bag does have no interfacing in the front so it's kind of floppy. At the same time you know that's going to make top stitching really easy. Well as easy as it can be with a zipper like this. And I still have my zipper foot on my machine because I know we're going to need it for the zipper. We're going to want it to be as close to the tape at the zipper teeth as we can, which is usually about three eighths of an inch, so we don't have a wavy zipper. I'm going to double check that it's three eighths of an inch, but I'm pretty sure it will be. Okay. Okay, now we're coming up on the other side to that one inch mark that we made on the other side. And similar to what we did with the piping, we want to veer, when we get to that one inch mark, we want to veer the zipper tape down. So when we sew this, we'll be sewing along here, but we're gonna keep going across here and our zipper tape is going to be hanging down like this. So you'll be sewing across here, 
clear this down at the one inch mark like that and keep sewing across there. Let me double check what this says. Um, yeah, it will be three eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to sew this first side, just starting from, from here, working all the way around until I'm just past where this veers off. So right about here. So go ahead and do that. We'll come back and we will, I'll show you how you make it so your zipper tape does not get twisted. All right, so I have the first half of the zipper on and this is where you can see how I veered off. Now the pattern says you could just baste the zipper. I always end up sewing it at just the seam allowance. I don't know why. Um, it's just what I do. And it's more because then I can follow the same lines um, when I'm, I'm sewing the lining onto it. Okay, so this is the tricky part. So what you wanna do is you almost wanna zip it up like this. You can see how my shape is gonna go there. Because now we have to flip it over to the other side. So now that we have it like this, unzip it, but hold that in place. And the way you're gonna know, so now we have them flat together like this. So, <laughs> it's hard to show with the big bag. So it doesn't get twisted. So you've got them teeth together. You're gonna flip it over top like this. So now the teeth are up and then you're gonna twist it one more time this way. So they're wrong sides together. I'll show you that again. Okay, teeth are down. You're going to turn this so teeth are up and then you're gonna twist it again so the other side is right sides together. It's gonna look like it's twisted, but it is not if you do it this way. And then you mark it the same way, or place all these the same way. And clip all the way around. That's just the easiest way I find to do the zipper so it doesn't get twisted. So this is the hardest part of the bag. Again, it's a little bit awkward because the bag is so floppy, so it's not standing on its own. It's not helping me out at all. But it's so pretty. Yeah, we're good. You clip it all the way to that one inch mark again. So I make my tail extra long. Um, I find it a little easier to work with when it's longer. And then you can trim it up to whatever length you want when it's done for the zipper. So I think it calls for a 25 inch zipper. I'd cut like a 30 inch or something. Okay, so I'm at that one inch mark right there. And then when I sew it. Okay, it looked like my video cut off right there. So veer off the one inch mark and then go take it back to your machine and sew that zipper on with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so we have the zipper all the way around. Um, I think mine might be a little bit wavy. I'll be able to correct that with the top stitching a little bit. So yeah, now the bag just goes together like any other bag that we have been doing um, or any other Shambhala bag. So you want to take your exterior and you want to place it into your lining right sides together. Make sure the back pocket is on the back of the bag. Match your centers and start clipping around. So we start there on there. Miss Coco is making her appearance. Match your seams on the sides.
To your other center here. tell you I'm not the best when it comes to doing top zippers they aren't my favorite they do look really nice but I don't know I struggle with them I'll admit it I'm not perfect they're like my kryptonite similar to um, grommets I don't like grommets either but I will always fight with them because the end result is always so good Make sure that you're pushing the zipper down and in, where, right here where we had it veered off. We don't want it to get caught into the seam that we are gonna be doing here. So make sure that's going down. You can use a piece of tape to mark, uh, help hold that down if you wanted to. Actually, I think in the pattern it says to do that. It does help a little bit. I have my zipper long enough that I know it's out of the way, though it's heavy enough that it's pulled down, so I'm not overly worried. Okay. So I'm going to continue clipping this off. When I go to sew this, I'm going to sew it from the inside of the bag, mainly because I can follow that zipper line. Um, so I know I'm not running over that top zipper and hopefully it won't be too wavy. I guess we will find out. <laughs> so yeah, I'll sew from the inside and turn it this way. After that, I'm going to turn the bag out through the corner or through the bottom. And then you're going to top stitch all along that edge. So it's just like any other Shambhala bag. Then you go to finish, you pull it, you turn it, and you top stitch it. I'm going to go ahead and do that. After the top stitching, come back and we'll show you the final results. Okay, I did come back before top stitching. Turning the bag was very easy. Um, I just wanted to come back to make sure I specify that you are going to have to be really careful with your top stitching because we are so close to the zipper teeth. You want to make sure your lining is pushed down enough that it's not going to get caught in that. This is also, if you notice any of it is a little uneven and it could be wavy, you can fix it with your top stitching, just making sure that that gap is even all the way around as you go to try to avoid that wave. I don't think I'm too bad, but we'll find out. So what I like to do is kind of roll it between your fingers Make sure that lining is down past the um, zipper teeth and then put a clip on and same all the way across. And trying to make that black gap as even as it can be to try to avoid too much of a wavy zipper. Closer to the teeth you can be the better to avoid that a friend has taught me. So using a zipper foot is, is crucial for this bag, I think, because this top part is the hardest part. And then if I had a cylinder arm, it would be super easier. If you have a free arm, definitely take advantage of having that for doing this. Otherwise, I'm going to take it down to my bed of my machine like this and do my top stitching that way. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to attach our final our finished products oh my gosh she turned out so much better than I ever would have imagined you actually don't understand what her shape is until it's all put together but this is it this is the Corolla bag I mean it is quite a bit bigger 
but the slouch that it gets, look, and my, my zipper turned out straight, but when you carry it, oh my God, she is amazing. So yeah, that's it. I hope that this tutorial was helpful. This is, there's Coco and Benny making their appearances. They have to do it at least twice in a tutorial. Anyways, I hope you liked this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. Thank you again, Sammy, for allowing me to do the launch of this of this uh, this bag. I am so excited for it to be released in a couple days. Of course, when you see this, it's already been released. I am so sorry about Coco and Benny. Um, anyways, um, I hope everybody enjoyed this. If you did, please like, give a thumbs up. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me a message, email me, look me up on my Facebook page. Everything is in the description below for links, for things for other tutorial, like for my other tutorials to show you how to do stuff like seal the bottom of the bag and make the straps, etc. Oh my goodness, I have no idea what they're barking at. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, if you haven't already, please subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.